Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dwarven.com. In this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Dwarfest ROM based on Android 16 onto the Moto G54 5G and the Moto G64. The code names are CANCUF, so please take a backup of all that on your phone. And let's get started. First off, get the Android SDK platform tools from my article and start it onto your PC. You may do so anywhere you want. In my case, I have run some C drive and you could see the files of platform tools are over here. Moving on. Now enable USB debugging and OEML locking. The debugging is required for ADB command and OEML locking is required to unlock the phone. So let's enable both the toggles. For that, go to settings, then go to about phone, device identifiers and type on build number seven times. Then go back, again go back, go to system, dev options and enable OEML locking as well as USB debugging from here. Type on OK. You might get one more prompt. Type on allow and with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let me first do a verification for that. For verifying, type in CMD in the address bar of platform tools over here. Hit the enter key. Now type in the command ADB devices and verify you are getting an ID. If you're not having this ID, then you may unplug and replug the phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use any other USB cable or use a different USB port. So carry out the USB fixes and verify that you are having an ID. Once you're having this ID, your next action is to unlock the phone. For that, I made a video and an article as well. In short, boot the phone to fastboot mode, then type in the fastboot OEM get unlock data command. You'll get the unlock data. Give this unlock data to the Motorola. They will then email you a code. So type in the command fastboot OEM unlock and that code, and that is it. The phone will be unlocked. When that is done, the phone will undergo a reset and boot to the OS. So please re enable USB debug once again. Moving on, you will now get the file from here, the Dropbox ROM file and the IMG file. The IMG file will also be in the zip format. Please don't extract it. Leave it as they are. Let me show you. This is the ROM file over here. And this is the IMG file package in a zip format. Leave it in a zip package only. Don't extract it. Once you've got both the files, copy them and paste the file inside platform tools, which is over here. Likewise, do a renaming for the ROM file. Let's rename it to ROM and the name becomes ROM.zip, which is here. Likewise, for the IMG packages, let's rename it to IMG and the name becomes IMG.zip. When that is done, Let's now boot the phone to fastboot D mode. Don't use the fastboot mode. We have to use the fastboot D mode because the IMG package will be flashed in the fastboot D mode only and not the fastboot mode. So open the CMD window and type in the command of ADB reboot fastboot and hit enter. The phone should now be in the fastboot D mode in a few seconds. So let's wait for that to complete and then type in the command of fastboot devices and hit the enter key. Just wait for a few seconds. As soon as the phone is in the fastboot D mode, only then hit the enter key. So wait for a few more seconds. After this screen, we should have the fastboot D screen in just a few more seconds. So let's verify that as well. In a matter of few seconds, we should now be in the fastboot D as you could see over here. Now hit the enter key and you could see we are having this ID. If you're not having this ID, in that case, you have to install the fastboot drivers onto your PC. The link is given over here. Install the drivers. Once that is done, Choose Windows X shortcut keys, then select device manager, expand the Android phone section and verify your phone is shown here. As you could see, it's shown here. If that's all well and good, then let's flash the IMD package. For that, the command is as follows. Fireboot skip reboot update IMD.zip. Copy it from here. Paste in the CMD window. Hit the enter key. The flashing will now start. Take only a few seconds. So let's wait for that to complete and you could now see the flash is now complete and now the phone will boot to the fastboot mode you could see in the fastboot mode and we are now inside the fastboot mode so let's now boot the phone to the recovery mode the newly flash USB recovery so type in the command fastboot reboot recovery hit enter the phone should now be in the recovery mode in a few more seconds let's wait for that to complete and after that your first action so do a phone formatting this will wipe off all data from your phone but it's a must so let's do that as well after the phone is in the recovery mode, we will do that. And we should now be in the DOFS recovery in five to six more seconds. So let's keep a tab on that. And you could now see we are inside the recovery. So choose factory reset, format data, again format data, data wipe is now complete. So go back and choose install update, ADB side load, open the CMD window. First off, type in the command of ADB devices and verify you are having the side load keyword as you could see in our case. We are having the keyword, if that's all well and good, type in the command of adb side load and the file name, which in our case is rom.zip and hit enter. 
द फ्लैशिंग विल नॉट स्टार्ट टेक अप टू अराउंड फोर टू फाइव मिनट्स सो लेट्स वेट फॉर दैट टू कम्प्लीट सो गाइज द फ्लैशिंग इज जस्ट अबाउट टू गेट कम्प्लीट इन द मैटर ऑफ फ्यू सेकेंड्स फोर्टी सेवन परसेंट इज द लास्ट मार्क विच वी हैव टू रीच एंड यू कुड नॉट सी द फ्लैशिंग विल गेट ओवर इन अ फ्यू मोर सेकेंड्स सो लेट्स सी दैट एंड यू कुड सी इट्स फ्लैशिंग इज कम्प्लीट नाउ इट नाउ यू लास्ट स्टेप टू डू अ फोन फॉर्मेटिंग मंथ्स अगेन सो प्लीज डू अ फैक्ट्री रिसेट इट्स अ मस्ट फॉर्मेट डेटा फैक्ट्री रिसेट अगेन फॉर्मेट डेटा एंड इट्स नॉट कम्प्लीट सो गो बैक एंड नॉट टैप ऑन रिबूट सिस्टम द फर्स्ट बोटिंग अप विल टेक अप सम टाइम I guess thirty to forty seconds. That's all normal. Nothing to worry about. Let's at least keep a tab on the boot logo or the boot animation, which will signify flashing has been done successfully. They should not appear any time soon. I guess ten to fifteen more seconds are required, and then we'll have a look at the boot animation. And after that, again, you have to wait for a few more seconds for the phone to boot to the OS. Not a worry. Let's wait till then. Just let's see the boot animation of the door first on. we should appear after this hello moto logo and it should be you could now see the dofest logo so flashing went fine let's now wait for a few more seconds and with this we announce i the os so let's get started for now i'm skipping the initial setup process if you want you may connect to wifi link it google account and then restore all the app data as well i am skipping that because that will take ages so let's skip all of these stuffs and just accept the terms and conditions that is the most we should do right now accept this as well and uh, okay we announced inside the os there was no option for the gesture navigations we would change it right away in the meantime you could see okay it has quite a few gi apps installed there are two many gi packages in fact which are you could see the google drive chrome files the gmail app google app maps messages phones are important okay Google Photos, Play Store, YouTube even that is there. Third party app is Accord uh, Music Player, and apart from that we have the camera app. Gemini is also there, and this is the new QS tiles as you might be aware of in Android 16. This is the settings page, the new one, and here you will get all the tweaks for this ROM. Status bar, net quick pull down. Let's say right hand side, and it's working well and good. Network traffic, 4G system icons. You may add a custom logo as well. You could see the various logos, which you could add from here. ROG logo is added as well. For now, let's keep it off because I'm not a fan of these logos. Clock positioning is fine. Show seconds. Battery style. Let's say iOS 16, and you could see it's not changed. Brightness control from here. This is also working well and good. Then the QS settings. Let's see what all is there. Tile shape mode normal is fine. Transparency. Let's keep it as fifty percent. The change you could see is there. QS layout. You may increase the number of rows and rows and columns if required. For me, this is the required. This is fine, more than sufficient. Four columns are there, and three rows, I suppose. Then move to bottom. No, it's fine at the top. QS header image. If you want, you may add an image. There are various images you could see from here, from various sources. Let's say Dofest Fresh, or any other tweak which might make some sense at least. Okay, let's skip this for now. I am not a fan of these images. Show edit button, show seconds, show power menu icons. Okay, all of them are required. Notification tweaks. I learn small notification in the button section. Invert your back long press action. You may add these actions, shortcuts to all of these three buttons. Then power menu. Let's see. Advanced reboot is there, and what all is there in advanced restart? System recovery and fast boot. Okay, it's fine. System UI is not okay. It's over here as well. So all the required options are there. Fast boot D is not there, but I don't think we require the fast boot D in any custom ROM. It's required only in the flashing. After that, we don't hardly we ever use the fast boot D mode. Show panel on the left hand side, partial screenshot, lock screen tweaks, unlock animation, screen of animation, CRT. It's working. Then spoofing is there as well. Disable forcing strong integrity. Key box. If you have a key box file, tap here and load the key box file. Then choose a PI file to spoof. 
you will not get PIF file by default. You have to manually upload the PIF file. So both the keybox and PIF can be get from my article. PIF. Go to this article and get the PIF file from here. Just give me a second. I should be having these files. Open either get manually or simply open my article and download the file from my article. There are a few files of PIF.json and the custom PIF.json file. You may get the files and simply place the file in the required location, which is given over here. Likewise, you may also get the keybox file from my article. Articles, comment section, email, I will mail you the file personally. Drop in the request in this email sections and from here, then I will take your email ID and share the file with you via the email. After that, let's see what all is remaining. Google photo storage is there as well, spoofing. Miscellaneous tweaks. Then you may take screenshot in those apps that does not support by default. For example, all the banking and payment app or streaming apps as well. And that is it for that. In the wallpaper and style section, you may change the themes from here. Choose any other color from this section or from here. There are quite a lot of choose options to choose from. You may switch the light theme from this section. Let's stick with the light theme only. It looks nice. Enable theme icon from here. Or change the average size. For me, the 5 cross 5 is the best one out there. But there are options till the 6 cross 7. That's great to see. Then you may change the icon in the status bar. Let's go with the Pavlova, my favorite one. Lumpy is fine as well, but Pavlova right now applied. Then you could also change the font style from here. There are various, you could see it's a never ending list. The third one is the one which I choose, Acknolica. Then it's applied as well. The icon shapes are over here. Various icon shapes, I go with the pebble one. Get the apply button and I guess it should not be applied as you could see. It's now done. In the lock screen, you may change the clock style from this section. My favorite one is always has been this one. The clean stock one. And I guess that's just about it in the home settings. Okay, you may change the icon size labels from here. Then in the home screen tweaks. So I have to ask the Google app, you can turn this off. This is one over here. You can turn off the Google app if not required. At a glance is this one at the top over here. You can turn it off as well. Show a random message is fine. Google search bar in the home screen at the bottom. This is the one you also have the AI tweak. There is some option to remove the AI tweak as well. I'll have to look at that settings. This cannot be accessed from here, but I guess there is an option. Turn off the AI if not required. Then apart from that, in the app drawer, you may force themed icon in the app drawer can be enabled as well. Then the gestures, let's see what all is there. Double tap, let's say, take a screenshot. Let me see. It's working well and good. Then apart from the gestures, we have the, what all are there? Okay, swipe down is also there. For the sake of reference, let's try to open the power menu. Well, currently it's not working. Swipe, okay, let me see once again. Let's take a screenshot now and see whether that works or not. I guess a UI restart is required. Let's do that as well. This will take just a few seconds. And now let me see if a screenshot works or not. Well, currently swipe down is not working. For some reason, okay, swipe down by single finger is working. Okay, that is the thing you have to use only the single finger and not the twi two or three fingers. Clear, shake phone to clear all task. Let me see, okay. Enable this. Let's see now what happens. Okay. Well and good. Apart from that, in the home settings, recent lens split screen should be supported as well. Memory info. The memory info should be there at the bottom as you could see over here. Then you have the option to close all Google lens screenshot. All of them are there. In the miscellaneous, you may hide the apps from this section and then show it once again, just a tap is required. And that is just about it in the miscellaneous. Apart from that, let's see what all is remaining. Is anything left or not? Display, dark theme, you may enable this from this section. Override force dark, this will force the dark mode across all the apps. DPI could be changed from here. 
screen refresh rate should be 120 hertz at all time i want that extreme rate this will lead to more battery drainage but that's fine for me i want a smooth experience for the usage tap to wake tap to sleep is also working double tap both of them are working well, well and good ambient display gestures okay well aod where it is currently i'm not quite sure it will only work for notifications i suppose then in the system section let's see what all is there system profiles okay it's fine gestures navigation mode i want that quick tap it hardly works on any rom let me see if it works here or not on back tap twice okay let's see quick tap is detected but screenshot okay i might have to minimize the page and now it might work let me see that yes it's working so that will not work on that page i don't know why double tap will not work on this page so don't try it over here then you may also change it to let's say mute calls open camera open recent apps launch the app as well of your choice okay any app of a choice that's great that's great to see let's say camera let's open the camera app from here and you could see it's open by using the app it's working as well great then apart from that what all is there okay it's gone quick tap let's go back which is not working no issue let's access from here settings system gestures one hand mode then apart from that okay this is already there so i have to take a screenshot is there that's great so this is working as well and you may install the updates from this section ot updates or simply do an edit side load of the required zip file from the recovery mode as well in that case don't need to don't do a factory reset because that's not required in installing ot updates so guys that's all from this video so any query with regard to any of the steps let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching